Welcome to the Metal Voice. Look at that. First time on the show, uh, Prika Amaral. Is that pronounced yeah. properly? Is it Amaral? Yes. Perfect. Is it, a right, is it the right tone? Is it the right pronunciation? Amaral. Yes, Amaral. Okay. All right. Of course, with me, my buddy, Neil Turbin. Neil, what's happening? What's happening? Oh, wow. All right. Cool news. Um, Nervosa. I guess there's a new album on the way. There's a, a new video that's going to be shot in uh, Greece, right? Yes. Uh, there's a tour that's coming up in the UK and probably some more festival dates as well. And uh, and I don't know what else. I guess there's all kinds of stuff. So I guess we've got a lot of questions for you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right. First of all, tell us about uh, the new band members. I know there's been a lot of changes over time. Okay, you got this new lineup working on this new record. Tell us about the new lineup and each person. How's that? Yes, now we have two guitarists in the band. So Elena Cotina joined the band the last year before we announced it to the public, but we were working together for this new album. We were composing all the songs for the, the next album and next the singles. And uh, after that, we joined the a studio to start to record this and we had a drummer a new drummer last minute like uh, two weeks before she joined the band before the recordings and we composed the drums lines from the zero uh basically in the studio we had a very nice times there a lot of work but very nice times and after we finished the recordings uh we have uh, we invited the bassist to join Nervosa uh, because we still had like a no definition uh, situation about Mia. So we don't know if she will, will leave or stay. So we managed to stay with the two bassists basically. So, but uh, Helpide, that is the new bassist now for Nervosa, and uh, she's doing most part of the shows and she can do the tours. And Mia, unfortunately, it's not available. Or do tours so but she was still can participate in a few shows in summer example and some single shows she can still appear playing with nervosa so and we are very excited for this new album now because i'm singing <laughs> it's a something totally different the situation uh, it's a surprise me in last minute so i decided to face this challenge uh, because I don't want to change a singer again in Nervosa. So I say, okay, let's let's do it. <laughs> it cuts the costs. It cuts the cost, right? We don't have to hire somebody, so now you can do it, right? Uh, I'm just not about the costs, but about to change again of singer, you know? Change singer is always complicated. And uh, I was afraid to trust in someone that will leave again the band because of personal reasons or whatever reasons, you know? That we can understand, of course, but to change a singer, it's always really hard. Change members is hard, but the singer, it's the voice of the band, you know? Yeah. It's a very hard to replace. So I say, okay, it's not something that I was planning, but I think it's now it's time for me to face this, you know? And if I want to keep it going on with the Nervosa, I think uh, it's a way to keep the band uh, life you know because changing again the singer and change again the singer will kill the band so i say no i would do it <laughs> yeah no smart smart yeah. so the execution of the vocals and also the guitar really stands out for me you know as far as the tone and uh, playing is that also your solo playing on there i'm sorry to be ignorant yes it was a, a huge challenge for me because i had to learn how to sing it basically in few months I was doing back in vocals before, but be a singer is totally different. So I was used to, to do low vocals only. Okay. And I, when I, I we started to record the album, I say, okay, I have to do more than low only because otherwise if I do only lows, it's kind of boring. So I have some classes with a friend of mine just to, to teach me how to do the, the high parts in a good to roll technique. And uh, she teach me, but I basically, when we start to record the album, everything was like a jam, basically, you know? I was doing things without to know exactly what I was doing. Of course, like without to harm my, my throats, I know how to do this without to harm, but then, I mean, 
I never experienced that. I didn't have opportunity to try different kind of voices or tones or whatever. So our producer, Martin Puria, was uh, riding me, you know, and somehow like, no, do this part like uh, more high. Uh, no, this it's more intense, more low. And this helped me a lot, I think, because if I was doing alone, it would be even harder. But I'm still learning how to do the thing. I mean, you're, you're absolutely taking it on. I mean, that's that's going over like if you were a surfer, you'd be going over the, the falls. You know, you're if you're in the wave. You know. <laughs> yes. And Neil, yes. you know, there. And Neil's Neil's like an accomplished singer, so uh, yeah. you know, uh, you know, he's if you're saying you're doing well, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what about the new album? I mean, are you sticking strictly to like harsh vocals and death metal vocals? Are you saying, you know what, maybe you put a little clean parts here and there. Is that something you want to touch on? Mm, clean for this album? No, because I think it was too much for me. So I didn't like, uh, it's not something that I know how to do 100% with extreme vocals. Almost there, I would say. So I decided to keep a focus on that, do right. And then when I learn how to do this properly, and then I can give a step more, okay. you know. Yeah. And uh, but look, each song that I recorded, I recorded it with a more or less different way because I recorded one song. The first song that I recorded was "Endless Ambition," and the day next, uh, I just woke up. Okay, I have to record a, another song, but I didn't remember how I sing it before. <laughs> And then I was singing in a different vibes as well, because I think I was feeling more what the song is asking for. And we have like a very different kind of songs inside of the trash metal vibes. But example, we have some songs that it's more into heavy metal, other songs that it's punk vibes. The other one is super death metal. They are, we have another one that it's super dark and I'm singing more low with the low vocals. Depends. I was feeling what the music was asking for me. Without to know so much of what are we going to do it, like it, our producer just pressed the rack and I was doing. <laughs> Without to think it so much. The greatest music was created that way. You know, the greatest yes. music was created that way. Just doing it. Vibe. Exactly. You know? I'm a huge fan of the 70s music because everything was more natural, you know, like anybody was thinking like, I want to sound like that because there was no references basically. So everything was created in that time. So I loved the experience to, to do this without thinking so much. Right. Yeah. So how do you find the, um, you know, the breathing part with the guitar in terms of delivery? Is that something that has been, you know, I know you mentioned that it's been a challenge to go from the low vocal to the, or a strike zone vocal of lead singer position. But do you I find think that it, you're, already uh, doing, you're already doing this with your low vocal because it's the same breathing. Unless you yes. just the chant parts, you know, only the chorus parts. It's a big challenge because I think everybody's about intensity. So if you, I sing so much intense, I use too much air and then I have, uh, I will miss air to, to sing it. I'm still learning about that, but actually this was not the problem for me exactly. The problem for was memorizing the lyrics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, my memory was like horrible. And because also we are not playing the new songs. So we are playing in the only the old songs because we didn't release yet. Only the Endless Ambition, the new single, of course. And uh it's a comfort, but because I'm playing this set for least for two years now. So it's a kind of in a comfortable zone. And I'm still need to put a little bit less intensity because sometimes I'm so happy and so excited that I put too much efforts there. <laughs> that should be a little bit less. I'm still so, learning, but I'm playing within years. So this helped a bit more. Yeah. So when do you expect the album to come out? It's finished, right? The album's finished? Yes, it's finished. Uh, the album will be out in September only. So okay. we have a that few months to still play the old songs. So in other words, and then you're going to have a new single to be released soon, right? 
a new single. You're doing a video for a new single, yes. right? Tell us about that. Yes. Tell us about that. Yes, our plan is to start the promotion of the new album in August. Uh, and we have a plan for more video clips, more three or four video clips and singles. Yeah, we're working now. Exactly in this moment, we are planning more or less. I cannot say so much to not... Uh, Just tell like us what you can. Tell us what you can. Destroy, Just tell yes. us when it's coming out, the song tracks and everything. Just, just go right ahead. Yes. Don't worry. We won't tell yeah. anybody. No, no, no. The, the thing is, we didn't fix it anything. We're still planning this with the label. I got it. I, got I cannot it. say the date is exactly, but I already know that the album will be released in September and the promotion will start in uh, in in August. But but I, I guess what I want to ask you is tell us about filming the video. You know, yeah. you're asking people to, to film, to come out and help you film the video. Yes. Oh, yes. We This will happen in... 10 days actually we were recording here in greece we invited the people to join with us and elena the guitarist has a bar here in greece and uh, we are inviting everybody just to to you know that famous and classical trash metal uh video clips you know that everybody enjoying there drinking some beers doing some cheers cutting bang and listening some songs and it's opportunity for we meet uh, the fans in Greece because now we have two Greek members in the band, but Nervosa never played in Greece. Can you believe it? We will it's more, take of a, it's a party. more. It's more majority Greek now. Yes, and we have a, a, a party in Greece, but we don't have a show. Of course, we are fixing that this year. We're gonna play here for sure, but the, the party will come first, then the show. So, and we decided to do this something special too because of the, our Greek fans that are waiting for Nervosa for so many years. And now we have two Greeks member in the band. And in the past, we have another one, the ex drummer Eleni Nota was from Greece too. So a lot of connection with Greece. So why not yeah. to record the video clip here too and help Elena with her bar there. It's an amazing bar too. Okay, this good. This is the idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great idea. A great idea. Neil? Do you find that uh, the singing that the sound of the band has, has changed somewhat or not really drastically. So in other words, your sound versus, you know, other singers in the band, you find that that's taking your music maybe in a different direction. In a, in a, you know, obviously the new single is, is really cool. So that's really my question is, is do you find that there's a change in the sound? I don't think it's it's changing because I think the idea of Nervosa was very clear since the beginning that was mixed uh, trash metal with death metal. And uh, this changed in somehow, but always keep the, the style there. I think it's because I was always composing the riffs, for example. Of course, I have a participation of other members uh, in the band. I didn't compose everything alone. But um, my riff is and my way to play was always there. And many times I compose uh, vocal lines as well and lyrics. So I will always participate in a lot in the compositions of the band. And even if we have like a three different vocals in Nervosa, example, Fernanda's voice, it was super trash metal voice, uh, more high and makes a lot of sense. And the riffs and the um, instrumental parts was more death metal in some albums examples so the equilibrium was always there like half um, trash and half death and uh, when we changed the lineup when diva assumed the vocals example she has more uh, extreme vocals more death metal but the instrumental was more trash in somehow so it the balance was always there mixing trash and death and i think uh, the difference of the band, it's the natural evolution of all the musicians and the history of the band too. Example, in the beginning it was more a simple structure, more simple riffs, and then it's getting more complicated, but it's still super trash. And this was one of my main, not fight, but uh, like a kind of fight that keeps Nervosa being trash. Example, the first break that we have in Nervosa was because the girls wants to make a Nervosa more death metal. And I say, mm, I like, I love death metal, 
but the idea of nervosa was a bit trash. We cannot leave this feeling, you know, like this thing. We can keep in doing trash, uh, death metal. We can do some songs more death metal, but not everything complete death metal. Uh, because I love all the bands that mix stuff, not only one thing, you know. You were too close, in my opinion, of course. It's like a personal taste. And uh, now, example, with the new album, we are trying to make this more different in many ways to uh, with the instrumental example, Perpetual Chaos. We have a song that it's remember a bit of Motorhead with the heavy metal mm -hmm. vocals. And then we have another song that it's, uh, example, Time to Fight, that it's a kind of punk, but with a bit of power metal, but trash metal. And then we have another song that is totally death metal, that it's People of the Abyss, you know, and then we have a, another one with a groovy trash metal, like a Perpetual Chaos song, and we have a super trash song like Venomous. So this kind of difference, you know, was always there, and now it's getting more and more and more space. So keep it trash, it's my fight. <laughs> Brico, so, so you're in Greece, right? You're in Greece now? Yeah. You, is that where you're going to be staying for a while, or your headquarters, or...? Is that where? Yeah, I'm between Italy and Greece now. You know, I live in Italy, but I'm more part of the time here in Greece because we are working a lot for the new album and for the next step plans and everything. So I'm in between of two countries for now. What's the in difference the between? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. In the future, I will decide where I will stay. <laughs> but yeah. for now, I'm uh, in between. Gr growing up like trying to break as a band in brazil versus breaking a band in europe what are what are the differences the good and the bad uh brazil it's an amazing country and it has a big uh, metal scene but the economic talking it's very hard so living from music in brazil is very hard europe has a better history economic talking and the metal scene it's more functional you know like we have many countries many different currencies many different cultures so in somehow it's easier to make this the things happen i can fly very easy from one country to another and very cheap but inside of brazil uh it's very expensive to take a flight and go in everywhere you know it's a more or less like i think in us it's not a cheap you fly inside of the country but in europe it's cheap to fly in each country to another. Yeah. That's why I can keep like a multi-country band, <laughs> you know, and make this happen because it's not expensive to fly. Of course, now because of the war and COVID and everything, the flights are more expensive, but it's still payable. Yeah. Okay. These days, um, you think about that. Ahead. These days you got to think about that kind of stuff because that's all part of the planning process and what's going to be, you know, this is how they make their living. They have to be financially you know, intelligent about the plants. But a lot of bands are you know, not able to go on tour with or another time. Yes. That's yes. great you have that plan. That's a, you know, a sustainable yeah. to keep the band playing live. Yeah, and our, our label is also from Europe. So everything that's happened from the band since the last five years, even if with the other lineup, the first lineup, uh, everything was more in Europe, you know. So for me, it makes more sense to stay here. And when I have to rebuild the band and find new members, example, I was looking for band band members in Brazil and and in Europe. Uh, but in the end, I see the band uh, like a forming in Europe and say, okay, I have to move to Europe. And the things happen. It was not something like, a, no, I will have a European band. No, it was not something that I think was just something that worked it for me in the end. It's so fascinating yeah. that you have a, a European band. I mean, most of the members, because being in, you know, recently in Brazil, I mean, the caliber of players there is, is amazing. I mean, you have such a, you know, the population is like Los Angeles. I mean, it's a huge in Sao Paulo, big, big population, lots of people and lots of talented lots of metal people and lots of players. So yeah. it's fascinating to me that you found these players in Greece. There's obviously a smaller country, but you know, concentration of talent, obviously. And, and female, right? That's the crazy part. We have all these talented yeah. women with you. That's amazing. 
But it's not everybody that is able to live from music. Uh, I can find a lot of talent girls in Brazil, example. Uh, but maybe part of them are not ready to, to live from that. Example, some kind of mentalities can be different. You know, expectations can be different. It's a big move, you know, come from Brazil to Europe or live outside the... Uh, some people doesn't have health, example. Our drummer, Eleni Nota, she joined the band and she discovered that she have a really have health problem. That's why she left the band. She cannot be on tour. It's very dangerous for her. So there is many reasons for why the Brazilians are not in their and why I have Europeans. But it was a totally coincidence that I could find members, two members in Greece, you know, it simply happened. And I didn't look in for like, no, we have to find another member. No. And the drummer is from Bulgaria now. So it's totally like I'm looking for who fit in Nervosa and he wants to leave from that. Because sometimes the people that has no idea how it's be on tour all the time and no see family and don't sleep well gain a lot of weight uh, because you're eating shit <laughs> you know no sleep and a lot of things like of this course. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is amazing <laughs> let me ask you so nobody speaks english as a first language which is even more crazy it's all english is your second language and so is elena and hell and uh your drummer right it, it's all your second language do you ever get sort of like Listen, I speak multiple languages too, but do you ever, you know, you always want to, you feel more comfortable in your own language, you, you know, like, do you ever have that feeling of, oh man, I wish somebody else would speak Portuguese or I guess you speak Spanish? In the beginning, when it was with the old, uh, the other lineup, uh, in the beginning, I was feeling a bit like that because I was not used to speaking English like uh, every day, all day for for forever, let's say, because I was speaking English every day when we were on tour, but not like a, in every, all the time, more than my own language example. But Diva, she was speaking a bit of Portuguese and she speaks Spanish that is pretty close to Portuguese. So I was feeling more comfortable. For now, example, I, I'm more used right now. So now you got to learn Greek. That's the thing. No, this is a, <laughs> so hard. I want. <laughs> Are you in you Athens? That... Are you in Athens? No, I'm in a city called Trikala that is in the center. Okay, of the... that's where Elena's from. Okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah, nobody and speaks they... English there, right? <laughs> they speak. Okay. They speak more than Italians. So you're staying at Elena's house? Yeah. Staying at... for, for... Okay. Yes. Is she right there sleeping or something? No, she's working in the bar now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right just asking i don't know yeah <laughs> maybe no, her, is I'm, her I'm, is her mother around cleaning up and making you food <laughs> no she lives alone okay i thought maybe her mother would be there making food for you and everything okay. <laughs> no, no she doesn't come around no my mother comes around and brings me food all the time yeah it's, okay. it's amazing <laughs> neil do you have any other questions yeah i wanted to ask um we got, uh, is there any I, I i maybe this question was asked and i somehow missed it it's, it's really over here but do you have a, a working title for the album? Is that something that's in oh. the album? I can't say the title <laughs> yet. <laughs> Napalm oh, will kill me if I okay. say that. <laughs> yes. What if we take a guess? Is it called Endless Ambition? Maybe. Endless Ambition is a good one. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Okay, so tell us about the UK tour now. You're going through the UK, and if I look quickly, bum, 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 it's going to start... May 22, right? And uh, you're playing London, Bradford, Sheffield, Wolverhampton, Manchester. You're even playing KK Steel Mill. Yes, exactly. And we have one show before that will be in Belgium in a okay. festival. And mm -hmm. it's a very nice festival. We'll play with the Destruction, Gamma Bomb, uh, Holy Moles, and uh, I don't remember artillery, actually. I don't remember if I could. Be. But it will be a very nice festival. And then we fly to UK. And we have these shows and probably we will have one more show happening in 27 because we had a festival that was canceled, the festival, unfortunately. And let's see if we can book show last minute, okay. cover this date. All right. 
Do this one more question, Jimmy. Sure. Yeah. You had uh, some great guests on on some of your previous uh, recordings, albums. Uh, you, you know, you work with Schmier, of course, from Destruction, great guy, and you know, Schmier, <laughs> and and of the Metal Voice, and and, and you know, love to see Schmier when he's out in L.A. And also Eric A.K. from Flotsam and Jetsam. So is there any plans on the new album to have, I know you're busy singing and doing, uh, you know, double duty, you know, swinging the guitar and, and vocals, but is there any plans to have, you know, any uh, guest vocalists or any type of guests on your album that we can know about? I know. You don't want to talk yes. About the details. I can say, I can't say who is going to be, but I can say some, some stuff. I can give some spoiler. Uh, we have two guests. For this album, uh, one singing with me, uh, and I can say that it's a girl. Oh. And uh, the second one, it's an amazing guitarist that did the participation with one solo in one of our songs. A and girl or a boy? Up. A girl or a boy? A boy okay. and one of my <laughs> We just nailed. <laughs> Sorry, to repeat that. <laughs> And uh, the, it's uh, one of my biggest influences. Oh, really? A boy that's one of your biggest influences? Yes. As a guitarist. Let's see. We got three no. billion people. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Let's go no. down the list. <laughs> Don't worry. We won't tell anybody. Don't worry. This is just between you and me and the internet. <laughs> it's probably Gus G, I bet. Nah, the what? Smiling. It's Gus G, probably. Ah, yes, of course. Yeah. So tell us your influences. <laughs> so last question: What are your influences? No. <laughs> well, I don't know. I can say the bands. Why not? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sepultura, of course. It's one of my biggest influences. Like uh, Slayer, Testament, uh, Vader. Uh, Pantera, Metallica, of course, uh, Exodus, Death Angel, um, ah, many bands. Okay. Yeah. What about females? Oh, so what about females? Look, females, uh, uh, I follow many of them, but it, this is more recently. I have to say that I took a long time to know the first uh, female band. Example, the first one was Girl School. Yeah, Girl School is great. Yes, they are amazing. And but I discovered them like in 2004 or something like that. It was very late when I since I started to listen metal was very late. Uh in that time the example the internet was not so famous in Brazil example like we didn't have mm -hmm. so much access. It was more limited. It was a bit expensive, you know, so I didn't have access every day. And I didn't know how to find the music. This is more from the 2009 from now, right? So it was more hard to discover bands, let's say. And uh, from now, I, I admired a lot, example, Ginger. Tatiana, example, as a singer, it's a, when, a person that I admired a lot and is, I have a, like an influence. Uh, I like... Uh, uh, it's hard to say, but the, uh, there is a lot of young bands coming now. Example, in Latin America, we have like a, a really big amount of girls in a metal scene, you know, yeah. like a many females band coming. Except in Brazil, we have Nervosa, Crypta, we have um, The Domination, Scrota, uh, we have uh, Sinaya. A lot of female bands and they are all professional and all living from music and probably most part of this name that i'm saying to you you will see for the next years i then releasing albums and everything and i'm still discovering you know girls here and there well, well you're gonna be somebody's influence you know you're gonna be some girl's influence i think you know because people are going to look at you. Some young girl is going to say, oh, she can do it. Then I can do it. Right? Yes. So, exactly. so you're going to be an influence. Uh, you're already know, an somebody. influence. Jimmy, Jimmy Freak is already an influence. Now she's doubling down. So now she's well, doubling down. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> I, I'm trying to say that their, you know, their legacy is going to influence 
you know, a girl saying, you know, I want to be like her, you know, and, and, uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. So it's good. nice. When we broke the first lineup, for example, uh, I received a lot of messages from girls around the world saying like, please, Nervosa can't die. We need Nervosa. Nervosa, it's, it's a very important for us. Please don't don't give up. I listen to this a lot. The people were sending me message. The girls will send me message a lot, and they say, "Nervosa will never die." So that's why I created the hashtag Nervosa will never die, and everybody started to use it. That's true. And I think there is a new generation of girls yeah. now. A lot of example the girls that I'm playing now. Example, um, uh, Elena, the guitarist. It's from the new generation. She's born in '94. And uh, our drummer, it's a new generation. She born in 97. When wow. I started to play the band, I didn't have uh, so much options. Like I didn't know so much girls, you know. It was very hair find a drummer, example. Girl drummer was almost impossible. But from nowadays, we see a lot uh, on Instagram, many girls appearing every day, almost uh, playing metal and playing even better and better. And this is amazing. Yeah. All right. Any last uh, remarks there, Neil? Well, I just want to say, Frika, congratulations on the new album in September, October, and on the tour that's coming up in the UK and Britain and Europe, and in the new band, you know, having singing uh, as a lead singer now and, and, and the front person yeah. and guitar player. And like, wow, I mean, looking forward to, to seeing the new um, live version. Hopefully, you'll come to the States sometime soon. And uh, yes, on all your hard work, because I mean, that's really, you know, the dedication and the commitment and, you know, not, not, you know, marching forward. I mean, that's what it's all about. And obviously you're, you're you know, doing it and in a great way. So congratulations. And uh, we look forward to the new album. Yes. Thank you so much for the words and uh, for the space here, for everything. Uh, we are hoping that we can go to U.S. this year, but more in the end of the year. And but we are going very soon. We have something about the US to announce very soon. Well, I'm in Canada, Neil's in the US, so yes, we got you, we got you covered everywhere. Yes, and when you're and when you're in the US in LA, in Los Angeles, Neil will interview you guys in person if you want. So. Woohoo, nice, it will be nice. All right, all right, guys, cool. Have yourself a wonderful day and thank you for everything. And keep thank it up. you guys, see you very soon. <laughs>